Welcome back to Godot Recipes. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to import 3D assets into your Godot project. For this demo, we're going to use some art packs from K on itch.io. And specifically, we're going to use the Dungeon Remastered and the Adventurer's Character Pack. And these are just fantastic. They're all really well done. And the Adventurer's Pack, you know, has multiple characters and a ridiculous number of animations uh, for each of them. So this will be a really good example of how to get all sorts of different kinds of assets into Godot. So download both of these, and then we'll drag those into our project. Now the first thing you're going to notice when you unzip all of these is that there are multiple versions of all the files. And we want to make sure we use the ones that are most compatible with Godot, which are going to be the GLTF versions. And so in the Adventures pack, we're going to drag this Character Items folder, the Characters folder, and then from the Dungeon Remasters, we're going to, go to grab the GLTF folder. And I drag those, all three of those into my project folder here in my new Godot project. And make sure that you give it a little time because there are a lot of files in these folders. Godot is going to take a few seconds to scan through them all. All right, let's start with the characters. And if you select the Knight here and look at the Import tab, you're going to see some of the basic import settings that we can change for this particular scene. But I'm going to go ahead and click on Advanced here to pop up this window, which gives us a lot more access to what's in the character and what we can do with it when we import it. On the left, you're going to see all the nodes that are going to be imported when we, when we use this. So there's a, a whole bunch of meshes in here. There's a skeleton with the rig. And here you can see all the animations. And the first thing I'm going to do is go over here to the root type. And we're going to change this to character body 3D. So that's the node type we're going to want our character to be when we use it. And then I'm also going to go look at some of these animations. So for example, let's go find the idle animation. And in the idle animation, you want to make sure we want this animation to be looping when it's imported. So you're going to need to go over here and pick Linear. It's going to be set to None. I've already done it with this one. Set this to Linear so that when it imports, it will automatically be a looping animation. And some of them we want to do that. Like Attacks, we would want to only play once. But Idle, the Walking animations, the Running animations, and the various Idle animations, we're going to want to set to Looping. So go ahead and do that with each of them. And then click Reimport and you'll be good to go. All right, what about the dungeon items? So down here in the dungeon pack, there are a huge number of files, and it's kind of hard to just scroll through them. I'm going to go ahead and put wall here in the filter so we can find the plain wall object and look at its import settings. Now the thing about the walls is we want them to be solid objects that we can't walk through. And so we want to add collision to these. And it would be really tedious to go to each one and add a uh, create it, then add a static body, then add a collision shape. And so we can do this on the import. If we click on the mesh here, we can say turn on physics. And then it'll automatically choose static here. We want it to be a static body. And then we can choose how we want the collision to be created to. So like try mesh will use the mesh itself to create the collision, which for this one isn't really all that necessary. We don't care about these little bumps and everything. Uh, so the simple convex is probably fine, which just does an outline. Or you can use decompose convex, which tries to make one, uh, you know, with as few pieces as possible. For this particular one, doesn't matter. For different ones, you'll need to look at what collision shape works best for what that object's going to be. But set that and click Reimport. All right, so now once you've imported the scenes that you want, let's go back to the night here. And if you right click on it and say New Inherited Scene, you'll get a new scene with this root character body 3D like we chose. And underneath all of the nodes that came in from the GLB file. Uh, now, one thing you'll notice is your hands are kind of full because the artist has gone ahead and included all of the different weapons and shields rigged and attached at the right places 
so that they'll work with the animations, which is great. And you can just go along and hide uh, the ones you don't want. So there, I'm just leaving the one-handed sword and the round shield. And down here, you'll see the animation player, where you can sort of go and look at all the animations in individually and play them and see what they look like. There's an attack. There's a block. Holds up the shield. Right, you can play around with these and make sure they all look good and figure out which ones you want to use for your game. Notice idle here is in looping mode, so when I play this, that animation is going to just keep repeating. And that's it. Once we've got our character imported the way we want it, and we've imported all of the dungeon items we want that we can start building our dungeon with, we're ready to start working on the game. And We'll tackle that in the next part. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Please don't forget to like the video and hit that subscribe button so you'll get notified as soon as the next video is released. You can find this and many other Godot recipes, tutorials, examples, and tips at GodotRecipes.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube to get the latest video tutorials. And if you'd like to help support these efforts, please consider clicking the Patreon link. Thanks.